For this reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he has done this thing, these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Say to the person next to you, I'm busy working. <laughs> My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews saw all the more to kill him. Because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said God was his father. Make him himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. But he sees the father do, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. For the father loves the son. And shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater things than these that you may marvel. For as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. Hallelujah. What I read in this passage here, what, what stood out for me was when Jesus said that whatever I see the Father do, that I do also. And I titled my message this morning, What do I consider as important? I want to raise a question. I want to ask you this question this morning. What do you consider in your life as important? Here we see in the life of Jesus that the will of God was important to him. Whatever the father wanted to do, he said that I will do exactly that. I will do nothing else. Whatever I my father see do, that I will do also. And this blessed me. But the, the thing that I've seen here that bothers me is that we as Christians, and allow me to say this, are so selfish sometimes. Because here Jesus says to us that he does whatever he sees his father doing. And I think we as Christians make the mistake that we often do the things that we want to do, not the things that God wants us to do. We make the mistake to say, but what do I consider as important? Many times we enter into certain circumstances, then we say, but I would rather want to do this than this. I do not feel like forgiving. I do not feel like it. I don't want to forgive. You want to do what is important to you. And we make that mistake often. Why? Because we always seek comfort. That's the reason why we are sometimes so caught in sin, is because we do what we enjoy. It's selfish. Whatever you enjoy, that's what you want to partake in. Because you're interested in your own, own comfort. Because there are certain things that you see as important in your life that actually at the end of the day has no value. For example, many times we have a vision saying that I really want to buy a new car. And you try everything in your power and day in, day out, you focus on this car and you say, I really want this car. Now it's good. I love it when people dream. But in short, that is actually not that much of importance. The things that is important is the things of the spirit, the things that has eternal value, not the things that has temporary value. Material things. And I know usually soccer is being played on a Sunday. And then sometimes people will say, but I'm watching soccer today. I'll go to church next week. And we make that mistake. Why? 
Just by your actions, you have proven to me what you consider as important. But you see, we as Christians must oath ourselves to walk just as Jesus has walked. I love what Philippians says, Philippians 1 verse 29, it says, For you it has been granted not only to believe in Jesus Christ, but to also suffer for his name's sake. Now, in that context, Paul was in prison. But today when you face various trials and temptations or challenges based on the decisions that you have made, you can also see it as a form of suffering. But at the end of the day, we are no longer focused on our own will, but on the will of God. Amen? Because when Jesus was busy teaching his disciples on how to pray, what did he say? When he taught them how to pray. Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. So we as Christians are still busy doing the things that we want to do. We are focused on our will. And your will will always be what is important to you. And I think it's important for us to test ourselves this morning to say, but what do I consider as important in my life? Many times we are so invested in things that has no value. And we want to focus on so many things, but at the end of the day when you're going to stand in front of God, God is not going to ask you, hey, so that you at least have enough money. When we are going to stand in front of God, God is not going to say to you, yo, you had a beautiful wife or beautiful girlfriend. No. God is going to talk to you one day when you stand in front of him on the day of judgment. He's going to talk about things that actually had value. He's going to start asking questions on, did you do what I called you to do? If you read the word, the word says that one day when we stand in front of God, the, the words that we really want to hear is good and faithful servant. What does a servant do? He serves. A servant must be a person of action. It must not be a lazy person. It must be a person that really does everything in his power to serve the king. And here God gives us the word and he says, but here I've given you my word and my desire is that you must see this as important and I want you to fulfill this scriptures right here. So I want to ask the question again this morning. Do you consider the word of God important in your life or not? And if you do consider it as important, show me your fruit. Show me your obedience. Because we are not only supposed to be hearers of the word, but doers. Amen? And here the Lord says that my mercies are brand new for you every single morning. What is the context? Why did he use the word mercy? The reason why he used the word mercy was the Lord said that yes, yesterday perhaps or last night you maybe did a lot of mistakes. Or you did some things that God maybe was not impressed with. Maybe you have done great things. But God says, but listen, this is a new day. I have a new vision for you. My mercies are brand new for you this day, this morning. Meaning God gives us a second chance every single day. He gives us the opportunity to do his will. But many times we tend to just take on the day and you fall into this routine, this pattern. And this pattern at the end of the day actually has no value. You wake up the morning, you brush your teeth, you eat your breakfast, you go to, um, to school or you go to your workplace and go on lunch and, and, and you do all these things and at night when you get home you switch on the TV, you sit on the couch and you just relax and that night you go to bed and you're like, God, thank you for the wonderful day, boom, then you go to sleep. Let me be honest, that's not a fruitful day. 
that is actually a day that does not have value. Because in short, you have done nothing of value. You have done nothing that was important to God on that day. Think about it for a moment. God wants us to do the things that is important to Him. Meaning that you should apply those things in your schedule on a daily basis. So if God says that I want you to preach the gospel to all creation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, then that means that during the day when you wake up and you go on lunchtime and you meet someone you should tell them about Jesus and try everything in your power to help that person repent. That means that in the morning when you wake up, you must pray first before you do anything else. That means in lunchtime before you eat something, you must pray and say, thank you God that I have something nice to eat. That means that during the day as you are working, honor your boss. Don't gossip about your colleagues. Do not act in, do not be a racist, do not be a person that holds grudges, do not be arrogant, do not be aggressive. That means we must be doers of the word, showing love towards everyone, preaching the gospel to everyone, showing kindness towards everyone. And in the night when you get home, it's okay to just go and sit on the couch and just relax for a moment because it was a hard day's work. But your journey, your job or your vision of the day was not supposed to end there. And sometimes after work, when we get home, we tend to just switch off. Where we are actually supposed to carry on the whole day doing whatever is important to God. Be honest now. When you knock off at five o'clock, and you go home and you sit on the couch. You know that there's basic chores that you must do. You must make food. You must wash the dishes, do laundry, mop the floors. But be honest. When last did you sit on the couch and you had some time to breathe, some time to relax? When last did you ask God in that moment, Lord, is there something that you want to put on my heart now? Is there something that you want me to do now? When last did you do it? And I think it's important for us as Christians to start making the things of God a priority in our lives. I want to share with you this testimony. I had a certain group of friends before I started serving the Lord. And we were all very naughty. Doing stuff that we weren't supposed to do and then I repented and they didn't and it was a Thursday morning I'll never forget it I was still working on the mines as a boiler maker and I stood up and I had to be at at work five o'clock meaning the bus will come and pick me up half past four and I still woke up early enough so that I had enough time to pray and to read the word of God. And I'll never forget it. Somewhere in Proverbs I've read where the Lord says, Do not tell a person to come back tomorrow if you can help him now. And I remembered, I read that verse. And it was a pay weekend. Come on, do you enjoy pay weekends? Do you enjoy it when that SMS comes through and says, Cha-ching. Come on. And I remember it was pay weekend. And when I picked up my phone, I, I saw the balance. And I was, I, was, I was happy. And usually on pay weekends, on the Friday, the Saturday, and the Sunday, they would give you off. So I knew on Thursday, I only worked until 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And then I would knock off. Then I had this whole weekend for myself. And I was so excited and one of my old friends WhatsApp me and say, John Ray, I'm in a tough position financially. Can I come and stay at your place for 
let's say around about two weeks. And I remember I was busy typing him the message saying that, uh, give me time until next week, Monday, or let's say next week, Wednesday, because actually I was hoping so that he would make a different plan. <laughs> In short, I didn't want him to come and stay with me. But while I was typing him the message, the Holy Spirit at that moment corrected me and he's like, John, but what did you read this morning? Don't tell a person to come back tomorrow if you can help him now. And I remembered, I deleted the message and I typed him, I said, not a problem, see you, see you tonight. And the two weeks turned into four months. And uh, I had a nice tablet but he thought that he would appreciate the tablet more. So he decided to borrow it permanently without my permission. And um, there were some challenges. And at the end of the day, he became a Christian because he saw the pattern in my life of going to church, praying in the mornings, praying in the evenings, reading the word of God, being obedient. And then he joined me. And he came to repentance. And as he came to repentance, the, law, uh, the Lord then provided him with the work. And I bought his bus ticket and I sent him off to, to Margate. And you now praise the Lord, he's working today. And all the glory to God. You see, the reason why I'm sharing this testimony with you is that morning when I woke up, I read the word of God. But during the course of the day, when he WhatsApp me, I didn't want to accommodate him because I wanted to do what was important to me. But in that moment, while I was busy typing the message, I was condemned. And then I said, but John Ray, this morning you have read the word of God and the word of God said this. And then I said to myself that I will do what is important to you, God, even though it cost me a tablet. I didn't care. When we serve God, know that there will be some type of suffering. It's not easy to be a Christian. It's not easy to love people. It's not easy to show kindness. It's not easy to smile always in all circumstances. It's not easy to find joy in this world it's not easy to forgive it's not easy easy to reconcile with someone that has wronged you but the lord says i need you to do this and the more and this morning i want to bring you the message of start doing what is important to god and follow his heart do whatever is on his agenda stop following your own mindset you as a Christian made the decision to say, God, that I will do your will. So then I want to remind you and tell you this morning, stop focusing on your own will. And pick up the word of God and say to God, God, you consider this as important. I will do this also. Lord, if you want me to forgive, I'm ending with this. Lord, if you want me to forgive... I will forgive. Lord, last night when I was busy praying, mind you, last night when I was busy praying, the Lord laid upon my heart and said, talk about it this morning. And I'm going to talk about it. And it's the, the word racism. And I see it's a common bad habit among people where the moment that you don't agree with someone you want to criticize them and say but I don't like this person and usually when the person is a different skin color you must know that there's a difference in culture as well and you tend to disagree with them and because of that you speak negatively towards that person and you say but mm, I don't like them I don't like the culture, I don't like the color. Once again, why are you acting this way? Because you are busy doing what you want to do. 
you are busy fulfilling the needs of the flesh. And the flesh is extremely selfish. The flesh does not care about the person next to him. But the other word of God says, and I, I did repent of this the moment I gave my heart to the Lord about 10 years ago. I was a racist. I was. But then I've read in the word of God where God says that if you cannot even love the person whom you can see with both your eyes, the Lord says, how is it possible for you to then love me? You cannot then love me. And when I read that in the word, I say to God, God, I repent. I will love everyone. I will do everything in my power to love everyone because your word said it. And I consider God, your word as important. I grew up in, in harsh circumstances and there were many people that hurt me and, and, and I did not have a nice childhood time. There were certain people that I needed to forgive. And then I reasoned it out and said, Lord, but they will never change. Even if I go to them and I want to tell them about Jesus Christ, they will chase me away. And I'm like, Lord, they wronged me. I don't like them. But the word of God says, don't like them, just forgive them. Because God says that if you do not forgive someone else, then God says, then how can he then forgive you? And then I said, Lord, I will do whatever is important to you. If you want me to forgive, I will forgive. If you want me to bring the whole tithe, I will bring the whole tithe. doesn't matter the cost. Lord, if you want me to do this, I will do this. If you want me to evangelize, I will do it. If you want me to honor my par parents, if you want me to honor my seniors in the flesh, Lord, I will do exactly that. I mean... Let your focus be today considering the word of God the most important thing in your life. Stop focusing on what is important to you. I want to say this in a respectful way. The things that are important to you has no value. But the things that is important to God has eternal value. God wants you to win souls. God wants you to pray. God wants you to honor. God wants you to love. God wants you to give. Be partakers. Stop being selfish. And focus on whatever is important to him. And you will find in the word of God what is important to him. By not forgiving, you are actually saying to God, God, this is not important to me. If you do not bring the Lord's tithe, then in short, you are saying that, Lord, I actually don't care about this. I don't worry about it. Because you need money to, to build a church. You need money to put, you know, food on the homeless person's table. You need money for electricity. The moment you do not partake... In the tithes and the offerings, you are saying in short, but these things actually are not that much important to me. You guys can figure it out. When you, are, when you were wronged by someone and someone really hurt you and you are not forgiving that person, you are selfish. You are selfish. And that's where you need to die to self saying that it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. I live, but yet not I, Galatians 2.20. Be the Christian that will stand in front of God one day, that will say, Lord, I considered your word as important, and I did everything in my power to make this a reality, and I can promise you and guarantee you today, you will be the person who, whom the Lord will say to good and faithful servant because the servants serve amen. amen hallelujah let's pray together
Father, this morning we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, and we say thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. Lord, I ask that you would please teach us how to be doers of the word. Lord, forgive us where we were so selfish many times doing what is important to us. Holy Spirit, please help us to do whatever is important to God. And Lord, this morning we repent and we say that, Lord, we will be partakers to whatever is important to you. We will evangelize, we will pray, we will honor, we will love, because that is what you have asked of us. And Lord, you are so beautiful. Thank you so much for everything. I pray also now, Lord, for every single person that will bring your, your tithe and that will sow into your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that you will open the windows of heaven. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching with us online.